My name is David Small, Rabbi of the Manual Synagogue, and I'm very honored to kick off our event today, welcoming everyone who is here, and to lead anyone who has not already recited in the Motzi. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaMotzi Lacha Min Haaretz. We bless you, Adonai, ruler of the universe who has brought forth bread from the ground. And let us say, Amen. It's my privilege to welcome to the podium the distinguished mayor of West Hartford, Mayor Shari Cantor. Please give her a full round of applause and welcome. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you for hosting us again at this really meaningful um, commemoration and understanding and recognition of heroes in our midst. So I, I just want to welcome you and thank you. I want to recognize uh, my colleague Deb Poulin for joining us today. You will also be hearing from two students from our Mayor's Youth Council who are, have undertaken an education program uh, and sharing with, with the other students uh, the history of the Holocaust, which is so, so, so important. I want to thank Voices of Hope, uh, JCRC, uh, and for all the, all the um, people committed to uh, continuing the message of sharing the history of the Holocaust uh, and the pain and the inhumanity and the, and the, and the true destruction um, that this created and how hate cannot cannot survive we have to we have to stamp out hate with love um, but we have to remember those horrible horrible acts uh, and not and never let them be, re be repeated again uh, again I'm proud of, of the honorees and proud of the work that the committees have done to, to be all together and I just want and you have a very full program so please enjoy your your um, your meal uh, and, and and wish you all well and thank you so much for being here A brief word of Torah. This week's Torah portion is Bishalach. The Israelites have been liberated from slavery. They are at the shore of the Sea of Reeds when they witness the might of Pharaoh's army bearing down upon them. They say to Moses, what? There weren't enough graves in Egypt that you brought us here to die in the wilderness? Moses says, don't worry, God will fight for you. And God replies to Moses, why are you crying to me? Speak to the people, tell them to go forward. To me, the message of this story is that while we look back and we vow that the events of the Shoah will never be forgotten and that our dead, our martyrs will always be honored we also resolve that as a people and in the societies that we live, we will go forward, we will make progress, we will speak to uplift the best instincts of the human soul to overcome hatred and darkness and murder, and that is needed today more than ever. And how wonderful that we have two youthful leaders in our community who will speak to us today and that gives us all great hope for the future. This wonderful organization was well named Voices of Hope. In a time when haters seek to bring darkness, let us resolve to kindle the lights and together to go forward. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joel Lohr, and when you're six foot eight, you have some adjustments that need to be made to microphones. Uh, it is my, oops, that's the wrong knob. It is my pleasure to speak to you today, and I'm honored to be the keynote speaker. I'm not sure which is a big honor and a huge responsibility. If I may, I'm going to start with a story. Son. Did you get my text? I was driving after a long day, one that ended up well into the evening in New Haven. It was my father on the phone. No, I said, but I saw something come through and it looked like a picture. What was it? It's of a newspaper article, he said, 
You really need to read it. What's it about? I said. My father proceeded to tell me the details. Can you believe that in Holland, almost 25% of people under 40 think the Holocaust is a myth? What? I said. In Holland? Really? I was shocked. My father and mother were both born in Holland, and I myself have Dutch citizenship. And some of you may know that members of my family helped to hide Jews during World War II. My grandmother was one of them, and another has been honored by Yad Vashem with her name on the Wall of Honor in the Garden of the Righteous in Jerusalem. When I got home, I proceeded to read the article that my father sent. It contained a survey that just came out by the Conference on Jewish Material Claims against Germany four days ago on January 25th. If you get a chance, well, I guess I encourage you to look it up, but it's disturbing. It turns out that my father was right. Listen to some of these statistics. 12% of all respondents believe that the Holocaust is a myth or that the number of Jews killed is greatly exaggerated. And yes, 23%, or almost 25%, as my dad said, of those who are under 40 believe that the Holocaust is a myth or greatly exaggerated. The report goes on. More than half of all the respondents, 54% of all Dutch people and 59% of those under 40, did not know that 6 million Jews were murdered in the Holocaust. Indeed, 29% thought that the number was well under 2 million. That number goes to 37% of those under 40. So let me be clear, 4 out of 10 people under 40 in the country of Holland believe that less than 2 million Jews were killed in the Holocaust. Do you get that? 4 out of 10 people under 40 think that fewer than 2 million Jews were murdered in the Holocaust. Equally startling to me was another finding. The study showed that 22% of Dutch respondents under 40 feel that it is acceptable, it's fine, to support neo-Nazi views. Lord have mercy. These numbers are tragic. They're appalling. I really can't believe it. In Holland, Holland is the home to the Holocaust. There were 140,000 Jews living in Holland prior to World War II. 102,000 of them are documented to have perished in the Holocaust. And is not one of the most recognizable names in all of the Holocaust from Holland. Anne Frank? And Frank. Anne Frank from Amsterdam from Holland, and yet even with that, 53% of Dutch respondents and a startling 60% of those under 40 when asked did not cite their own country as home to the Holocaust or one of the countries in which the Holocaust happened. I'm deeply distressed by this because it has a connection to my own home, the Dutch, and our story, which I'm proud of even while I know more could have been done to hide and help Jews during World War II. Some of you may know that recently I was involved in a project to tell the story of a Holocaust survivor named Mitka Kalinsky. It came out in a book uh, recently. Mitka was born in Belisarkwa in Ukraine, a town that at one time had a population of more than 50% Jewish. It's a unique story. And that's actually kind of a unique thing for the, the Holocaust itself, in that a young Jewish boy was orphaned, put into a, an orphanage in Belisarkwa, escaped, ended up going through camps, and eventually ended up in a lesser-known camp called Pfaffenwald, uh, where a Nazi officer took him as a young boy into his home as a slave. Mitka survived and eventually ended up in America. But in arriving, he tried to bury his past, keeping everything a secret, hiding the fact that he was Jewish and that he had no family for almost 30 years. Eventually, he broke down after 28 years of marriage to his wife, Adrian, through a nervous breakdown and told her everything, and then began a lifelong quest 
to verify his past, to reconnect with his Judaism, and to become whole. On August 20 of 2001, 150 Jewish congregants stood with him in a synagogue in Long Island as he was bar mitzvahed, a man well into his 60s. When we worked on the book, we asked various people to read first drafts in an effort to make sure it was engaging. I'm actually a scholar of religion, and so I'm not very good at writing novels. And so we had a number of people help us read it, and one of them was my father. I'm convinced that my father being intricately involved in that process has made himself an ally in Holocaust education. As part of that phone call with my father that night, he proceeded to tell me that he went to his local Christian bookstore in Canada to order more copies of the Mitka book. As you can imagine, he's a proud dad and he likes to give them away to people. He then told me of how he spoke to the bookstore manager and said, you probably want to bring in a few more of these books for the bookstore. Maybe other people will want to read it as well. Apparently, management is thinking about it. Time will tell. Though I don't know the outcome to that, and maybe they will bring it in, this little story just reminds me of one of my larger concerns in the world. I don't see many Christian bookstores carrying books about the Holocaust. My own people, Christians, often seem to have little interest in the Holocaust or what Jewish people call the Shoah. But there is more. Through my research and through my experiences as a Christian growing up in the church, I've come to see the ways in which my own history is deeply ugly with anti-Semitism. Growing up, I can recall derogatory uses of the word Jew in high school, and I can remember even in my own life why I was bothering to study rabbinic interpretation, Jewish interpretation as part of my PhD studies. Even with our family of hiding, history of hiding Jews, I can remember one family member pulling me aside and saying, why are you doing that? What would Jews have to teach us about this? I came to examine things more carefully, and I recall reading Edward Kessler's introduction to Jewish-Christian relations, and it so, so deeply troubled me. Despite Kessler's sincere attempts as a Jewish scholar to point out positive moments in our history of Jewish-Christian relations, there were so few in this book. More often than not, Christians have not only allowed anti-Semitism to go unchecked, but they have fostered it. Probably the most moving book that I have encountered on whether the Nazis understood themselves to be Christians was actually not a book about that topic. No, it was a book about guilt and denial by Nazi perpetrators. It's called The Mark of Cain, Guilt and Denial by post -war, in the Post-War Lives of Nazi Perpetrators by Katerina von Kellenbach. This is a fascinating book. If you ever get a chance to read it, and I hope all Christians in particular will read it, she sifts through she, really, she was able to dig into the archives in Germany of the chaplains who served the uh, perpetrators at Nuremberg while they were on trial. So you can imagine these Christian chaplains sat with those who were going through the trials. Despite their atrocious actions, the, the horrors of the Holocaust, they believe that what they did was justified by God. They had little to no guilt, virtually none. I recall one story of a person having guilt, and it wasn't one of the perpetrators. It was a regular person in Germany who ended up uh, killing an ally who was also executed at Nuremberg. It's a fascinating story. He's the only person from all of those prison chaplain files who could show guilt, a person who had any remorse for what happened in the Holocaust. This is a book that every Christian should read. I am convinced that education is key if we are to make any headway in this problem. It is also essential if we are to make sure that the words never again are true. And so, if I may be blunt, let me say this. As Christians, we should be ashamed. Ashamed of our long history of anti-Semitism. Ashamed of the fact that even if it's not the only cause of the Holocaust, the murder of six million Jews could not have happened had the groundwork not been laid by hundreds of years of Christian hatred and mistreatment of Jews. Perhaps more than anything, we Christians should be ashamed that so few of us stop to recognize Holocaust Remembrance Day and Yom HaShoah later in the year 
Should not these days of remembrance be even more important to Christians? I do stand ashamed today. I'm sorry this is a heavy message, but this is a sermon for me and my people as much as to you as Jewish people. I'm grateful that some Christians are here today. Thank you for being here and that some Christian denominations are working for change. But I have to say, overall, it feels like so little. Overall, it seems that not enough Christians care about the Holocaust and our connection to it. I stand in the special place today grateful for Voices of Hope Connecticut, their important work to educate the public and raise Holocaust awareness. Support their work, please, support their work. To Kathy Fishman and Robin Landau, thank you especially for inviting me to be here today and to be involved in your work. I'm committed to working with you to achieve one of my life's goals, which is to help Holocaust remembrance be more than just a Jewish phenomenon. Today, I'm also grateful for this synagogue, Emmanuel Synagogue, for its welcome of me at services, especially by Rabbi Small, but also, I need to say, my new friend, Rabbi Lazowski. I don't know if I've met anyone more dear to me or more interesting or more gentle and loving than Rabbi Lazowski. Though I am an outsider to this place, you make me feel like family. And I, those sacred moments where you welcome me into that thing, I think you call it the kiddush, where you have wine and juice and alcohol, it's my favorite part. <laughs> the services are good, but that bit with the alcohol, that's a really great little part of the service. Third, to the larger Jewish community today, your perseverance through all of this, I know, can be discouraging. Thank you for taking time to join each other and myself to say never again in a world where fewer and fewer people seem to care, especially when we think about those Holland numbers. Lastly, if you are a Christian here today, maybe listening somewhere, maybe read these words after. If you are a Christian here today, thank you for being here and thank you for caring. I'd like to read some words for us from our own scriptures from the New Testament, the first book of John, that says, these, says this. Those who say, this is from the Bible, the New Testament part of the, our Christian Bible. Those who say, I love God, and yet hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment that we have from him is this. Love must go to our brothers and sisters also. If Paul is right in the book of Romans, also in the New Testament, that as Christians we have in some way been adopted into God's holy people, the children of Israel as Gentiles, then the Jewish people are in some way our brothers and sisters. And so I implore my fellow Christians, indeed our scriptures implore us, to love the Jewish people, our brothers and sisters. We cannot claim to love God if we don't. And so let me conclude by saying, today we remember those who have died because many of us did not love, but we hope that we can change, that there is hope, that we can truly say the words together as Jews and Christians, never again. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Alan Berkowitz. It gives me great pleasure to present this year's Chesed Award to Nina Jacobs. As you may know, this year is the 80th anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. It's also the 80th anniversary of the liquidation of the Vilna Ghetto in September of 1943. Jews had less than a 5% chance of survival in this region, the lowest rate in German-occupied Europe. This is juxtaposed by the spirit of Jewish Vilna, known as the Jerusalem of Lithuania. This spirit is exemplified by the words written by Hirsch Glick that we'll hear later in this program. Glick's Zogdet Kein Mol, never say, 
you're walking your final road, would become the anthem of Jewish partisans and survivors across Europe. The song praises Jewish heroism, offers strength to the suffering, and recognizes the enormity of the sacrifices that were made for freedom and instills hope for the future. Nina Jacobs is one of the youngest survivors of the Vilna Ghetto due to the decisions made by her mother and grandmother. Their spiritual resistance led them to say, Zognit kein mol, as do geist than less than vig. These were torturous decisions that no one should ever have to make. They had to find and place Nina with someone that they prayed would be a righteous family. Her harrowing account of survival is highlighted by the extraordinary omits, courage, and chesed, loving kindness, of her Polish rescuer, Jan. As a young child, Nina had to continually adapt to survive under unthinkable circumstances. After liberation, she had to reacquaint herself with her mother and her true identity. Coming to America, once again, she had to adapt. She educated herself, married, had three children, and never forgot about the kindness and love she received from Jan. After all that Nina had been through, she was always willing to give back. She exemplified chesed by giving testimony, telling everyone that what happened to her and the Jewish people should never happen to anyone ever again. When I spoke to her son, Ira, he had a lot to say about his mom. Each of these things circled back to Nina's love of family. He said, Nina can be tough, and that certainly makes sense. She loves Italian food at Branchinelli's restaurant. She never colors her hair. I'm not sure I should have said that. <laughs> Nina is an exceptionally and extremely loving and involved bubby and takes great nachas in her relationship with her kids. Having personally had the privilege of hearing Nina give testimony to students, it's easy to see why these kids listen intently to her and surround her with love when she's finished. They don't want to let her go. They can feel her honesty, integrity, vulnerability, truth, and caring that are ever present. Like Ira said, with Nina, what you see is what you get. It's my great pleasure to recognize the exceptional kindness of Nina and present her with the Chesed Award. Please join me in welcoming Nina.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kimberly Bolero, and I am the Hero Center Director at Voices of Hope. It is an honor to join you today to present the Simon Conover Recognition for Excellence in Holocaust Teaching to two exceptional teachers. Simon, a Holocaust survivor himself, endured the unimaginable hardships of the Shoah and later made sure to live every day of his life to the fullest, a life of love, gratitude, and empathy. Rachel Torres of Newtown High School and Joseph Goldman of E.O. Smith High School have both demonstrated incredible dedication to Holocaust and genocide education over the years. Together, we organized field trips to the Museum of Jewish Civilization at the University of Hartford and arranged for survivors and descendants to meet with their students. In their own classrooms, they have delved deep into these immensely difficult but important themes, and they have done it with respect, care, and passion. I saw this care not only in their course design or the materials they used, but in how their students conducted themselves in the museum and with our survivors. Each student was well prepared for what they would experience and they treated our space and our survivors and our descendants with maturity and great respect. Rachel and Joseph embody what this recognition was created for, promoting kindness, empathy, and active remembrance in the classroom so that the next generation can continue to build a better world for everyone. Rachel and Joe, congratulations on receiving this recognition and more than that, thank you on behalf of all of us for being a shiny example to your students and community. Good afternoon. My name is Stu Abrams. I'm a social studies teacher at Avon High School. It is my honor to introduce Joe Goldman. Mr. Goldman has taught high school social studies for 12 years and teaches an elective focused on the Holocaust and the Armenian, Cambodian, and Rwandan genocides. As a member of the Yale Fortunoff Teacher Advisory Council, Joe helps produce Holocaust curriculum to be published on the Facing History site and used as a teaching tool throughout the country. In 2020, Joel was the project manager for a civics curriculum writing project that has been published on the Secretary of State of Connecticut's website and shared with teachers across the state as part of the My Election, My Vote initiative, which is designed to support civics education across the state. If you'll allow me, I have just a very brief personal note. Uh, Professor Lohr talked about the role of education, the power of education, the essential nature of education, and hopefully it'll make sure that the Shoah is a warning and not a precedent. In a way, Hitler and Stalin are still alive. They're waiting for us to forget. I've had the honor and good fortune of being with Joe uh, on a variety of, of committees and uh, various projects, and I always seek out his counsel and his wisdom. Mr. Goldman is an exemplar of the Holocaust and genocide educator for the 21st century. While being well-versed in the content in the area of study, it's his passion that makes him the master teacher that he is. He shows his students a way to see the world through a lens of radical amazement. With integrity and courageous empathy, he's able to navigate the emotions that are evoked in, this, in his students by the study of these catastrophes and then being able to bring them back to a safe space. After meeting some of his students, I know that he has left an imprint on their young minds and a handprint on their hearts. It's an honor to call Mr. Goldman a colleague, but even more importantly, to call him a friend. Joe Goldman. First off, thank you so much. Um, I'm used to speaking in front of a crowd every day as a teacher, and yet I'm very nervous up here, so you have to forgive me. But um, this is truly uh, an incredible honor, um, especially that it's coming from Voices of Hope, which is an organization that does incredible work on a regular basis. So I'm, I'm, I'm moved by this, um, and I appreciate it very much. I just have to say um, a, a couple of important thank yous. Um, 
to people like Stu, who, who's been a guiding light for me as I've been working in education, um, to my wife, Sarah, who's, who's here today, who um, is constantly supporting me and giving me all the good ideas, so really I give her credit. Um, uh, to Ruth, who's sitting right next to her, who shared her story with my students this year, and there's a lot of people in this room who do important work on a regular basis um, that allow me to, to be here. So uh, I'm very appreciative of all of that. Um, one of the things that I've really focused on as an educator um, is, is pushing students past what you might think of as like using the textbook as a primary um, mode for learning about history. And I, one of the things I've asked them to do is use testimony. There's been a new focus on that. And I've sort of been inspired by Yale University and Aya Marzik and some of the work that she's um, done to, to do that. And that's possible in a few ways. And one of the most powerful ways is to have um, individuals who've, who've witnessed history speak to that history to, to our students. Nothing's more powerful than that. And um, uh, we've had a number of, of people who are in this room who've, who've done that. And I just want to share one quick story before I step aside. Um, earlier this year, my, my students from E.O. Smith High School sat down with Ruth, Ruth Weiner, who um, told her story about survival during the Holocaust. And towards the end, someone asked a question about um, how we find the light. How do we continue to inspire people and to, to, to build knowledge that we heard about doesn't exist in the world today? How do we do that? And Ruth um, asked how many people in the room had a cell phone. And I didn't know where she was going, but um, you know, every student raised their hand, of course. And she said, well, how many of you have turned the light on your cell phone on recently? And a few hands went up. I was a little surprised by that. She was too, but a few hands went up. And, and she said, well, just imagine yourself in a dark room. And uh, there's no light. You can't see. And uh, just one person in the room turns their light on. And all of a sudden, you can see a little bit more clearly. And then a few other people turn their lights on. And um, that's what Voices of Hope does. And that's what you are doing here in the room today. And, and, and I just want to say I appreciate that so much. Um, I appreciate the story and you sharing your time, Ruth. And, and so um, really, this means everything to me. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Colleen Simon, and I'm a middle school teacher at Solomon Schechter. Coincidentally, Ruth was the first principal of that school, where I am honored to teach right now. And I have the honor of introducing our next um, recipient. And I just want to, again, following Stu, I've learned a lot from Stu. So he said, I'm going to write a few quick notes. And I said, well, I'm going to do that, too, because if Stu can do it, I can do it. So. Um, so I just, I just want to remind, I had the privilege of hearing Rachel's passion for this educational mission firsthand when she introduced the Dador Vador honoree Elaine Sandler at a Voices of Hope, Evening of Hope. And I still think of her words. And um, also my husband spent his academic career at Newtown. So Newtown is a very special place for us. And after the events of 12, 14, 12, they weren't, you know, the, the faculty and some of the administrators were afraid to put this hard history back because the students had been through, through so much. So I'm thinking that also speaks to Rachel as an educator because now she has students in her classroom who went through this as very young children and she is teaching them this difficult history and in such a way that um, just based on what I've heard about her, I've never had the honor of being in her classroom, but just that she's able to do this with a dignity and make it um, a safe place for the students to speak of in Newtown. So now I'll read the official remarks. Rachel Torres teaches at Newtown High School. In 2019, she received the Holocaust Educator Fellowship for the Olga Lengel Institute for Holocaust Studies and Human Rights, the Tolley Program, and participated in a Holocaust teacher training program. Also in 2019, she traveled to Lithuania and Poland as a Yukon Thomas E. Dodd Fellow to study Jewish life before the Holocaust. In 2020, she received the Fania Heller Teacher Award for Excellence in Holocaust Education from the Museum of Jewish Heritage. In 2021, she was the recipient of the Profiles in Professionalism honor from Newtown Public Schools. 
Last spring, she organized the first Holocaust Remembrance Day at Newtown High School for over 300 freshmen. So it is my privilege and honor to give this award to Rachel. Good afternoon. Thank you, Connecticut Voices of Hope, and to the Simon Conover family for this humbling recognition. Congratulations to my fellow educator in the trenches, Joe Goldman, for receiving this honor as well. You know, the state mandates that I teach the Holocaust, and I have a plethora of curricular resources. To, to assist me in doing so to the letter of the law. However, I choose to teach the Holocaust according to the spirit of the law. I teach it with passion and conviction because Holocaust history is hard history. I see it as my moral and civic duty to teach it with accuracy, compassion, and reflection. Every day, I endeavor to create a classroom environment that transforms and inspires my students to be global citizens, informed citizens, and agents of change. I want my students to know the truth so they will never forget and be able to refute Holocaust denial. That's why I have my students listen to and meet Holocaust survivors like Ruth, and hear their harrowing testimonies. I want them to understand the importance of remembering and honoring the memory of those who have endured unspeakable tragedy. Now with the loss of survivors more than ever before, we must teach this with a sense of urgency and compassion. Holocaust and genocide education reminds students of the consequences of their choices and the responsibility that they have to stand up against bias, against the evils of racism, anti-Semitism, and hatred. Holocaust education inspires students to resist injustice, rise above, and make a change. I love the slogan at the US Holocaust Memorial Museum which says, what you do matters. And you know who taught me that? My first teacher, my mommy, my Catholic Christian mommy, who is a voracious consumer of all things Holocaust. So I thank you, mommy, for being my inspiration. This is because of you and for you. Thank you. Good afternoon. We're from the government. Good. Um, my name is Derek Slap, I'm state senator here in West Hartford, um, Farmington, uh, Burlington, and Bloomfield, and we're here to help honor the honorees. Um, before I do, I just want to acknowledge, Joel, thank you for your comments. My ancestors were Dutch Jews, um, Slap family, and anyway, so it's, we all have a connection that's particularly poignant, and, and thank you for your, for your words. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We have a couple citations, but I think that there's one here. I want to make sure that we don't forget Nina. So I'll read this one first uh, for Nina. Uh, and this is from the General Assembly, an official citation introduced by the West Hartford uh, delegation. So myself, uh, Representative Gilchrist, Representative Farrar, Representative Gibson, uh, Representative Exum. Uh, it hereby known to all that the Connecticut General Assembly offers its sincerest congratulations to Nina Jacobs in recognition of the 2023 Voices of Hope Chested Award bestowed on individuals who demonstrate exemplary acts of loving kindness that find expression in the mission of Voices of Hope. Nina Jacobs is the embodiment 
tested to everyone with whom she interacts. Her boundless kindness is a shining light that helps us to sustain the world. The entire membership extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses hope for continued success. So congratulations to you. I'll come down and we'll, we can come down and we'll give it to you right after. So we have a few more, bear with me, for these amazing educators who we just heard from. So um, I'll start with Rachel Torres, uh, again introduced by the West Hartford delegation, and uh, Senator Lesser is here as well, and he's going uh, to read a citation from uh, United States Senator Richard Blumenthal. So we'll begin with uh, Rachel Torres. Be it hereby known to all, the Connecticut General Assembly offers its sincerest congratulations to Rachel Torres in recognition um, from, and we want to acknowledge that she's from Newtown High School and a recipient of the 2023 of the Simon Conover Recognition for Excellence in Holocaust Teaching Award presented to educators who have shown their passion, and boy, you can tell that she is passionate, right, for Holocaust education. We thank Rachel for her exemplary work with students and the entire member of the General Assembly um, is uh, offering very best wishes on this memorable occasion, and it's signed by uh, the Senate President. Uh, Marty Looney, the Speaker of the House, Matt Ritter, and our Secretary of State. So congratulations, Rachel. Uh, so I am not Dick Blumenthal, but I, uh, uh, I do have a uh, re special recognition uh, from him. Uh, I'm uh, Sen State Senator Matt Lesser, uh, and it is a certificate of special recognition presented to Rachel Torres in honor of rec receiving the 2023 Simon Conover Recognition for Excellence in Holocaust Teaching from Voices of Hope. Signed January 29, 2023, Senator Richard. I am not 6'8". Good afternoon, and um, it is indeed a pleasure to be here on this day that is so important that we do remember. And I also would like to say as a former educator, um, I have to say that to me is foundationally where we can really make change and experience change. And to have such wonderful educators, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm State Representative Tammy Exum. The citation I'd like to um, is from the General Assembly, official citation introduced by Senator Derek Slapp. Representative Jillian Gilcrest, Kate Farrar, Bobby Gibson, and Tammy Exum, be it hereby known to all that the Connecticut General Assembly offers its sincerest congratulations to Joe Goldman in recognition of Joe Goldman from E.O. Smith High School and the 20 is the 2023 recipient of the Simon Conover Recognition for Excellence in Holocaust Teaching Award, which is presented to educators who have shown their passion for Holocaust education. We thank Joe for his exemplary work with students. The entire membership extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued success. Given this 29th day of January, 2023, by President uh, Marty Looney, uh, President Pro Tem, Speaker Matt Ritter, Speaker of the House, and Secretary of the State, Stephanie Thomas. Congratulations. Okay, and once again, I have a, a, a special s a certificate of recognition from Senator Richard Blumenthal to Joe Goldman and honor of receiving the 2023 Simon Conover Recognition for Excellence in Holocaust Teaching from Voices of Hope. And on a personal note, I will note that I have known Joe now for 17 years, I think, and uh, it's just extraordinary uh, the work that he's done. Um, and so uh, proud of the students, uh, the lucky students at E.O. Smith High School who are able to uh, enjoy his teaching. And, and I'm gonna turn it over to Representative Bobby Gibson, who I think has an update. Good afternoon, everyone. 
I'm State Representative Bobby Gibson. I am not new to the legislature, but I am new to West Hartford. With the changing of the district, I now represent West Hartford, and it is an honor. Um, I'm just here to bring uh, greetings with my colleagues from the state of Connecticut. Um, it's so important, the work that we're doing and the work that is being done today um, by Voices of Hope and other organizations to remember the atrocities that have happened so long ago. When you forget or if you don't pay attention, it's bound to happen again. And just the, the actions of the, this past week um, gives testament to that. So it's an honor to have, uh, to be up here, especially with the, the educators. My, myself, I'm an educator, I'm a vice principal in Bloomfield, and thank you for the work that you do and um, making sure our students understand the atrocities that have happened not so long ago. And Ms. Weiner, it's, it's good to see you. Um, thank you for everything you do. We really appreciate you and we love you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Kathy Fishman, and I'm the Executive Director of Voices of Hope. Thank you all for being here today. It is an honor to be in the presence of so many survivors today and to have the opportunity to recognize each and every one of you for your courage and resilience. I would like to ask all of the survivors in the room to stand as we read your names while our students from the Mayor's Youth Council present you with a rose. If you are unable to stand, please raise your hand or have a relative stand for you. It has been the practice at ceremonies around the world to use a yellow rose as a way to build relationships between survivors and younger generations, which is why we have students giving out roses today. It also symbolizes the yellow star Jews were forced to wear during the Holocaust. Holocaust survivor Franca Kahn said, I no longer have to wear a yellow star. I can finally celebrate with a rose. Today we present roses to you to recognize your strength, the beautiful lives you've created, and to signify we are still here. So if the survivors, I'm going to say your names if you can stand. Sylvia Brill, Leon Kamides, Edith Dennis, Tootie Fishman, Nina Jacobs, Louisa Kausner, Esther Kanner. Sarah Kirschenbaum, Michael Klebanoff, Robert Lesser, Beatrice Mitlack, Miriam Schreiber, M Michael Selinger, who couldn't be with us today, but his wife is here. Jack Vogel, Ruth Weiner, and Erica Cohen. Did I miss anyone? Thank you all so much. like to take a moment to acknowledge those survivors who died within the last year. Hans Stargarder, Rita Germain, Ilsa Wishnia, and Fran Katz. Our goal today and every day is to remember. May we never forget their strife, their humanity, and the mark they left on this world. This April, I will join a delegation from Voices of Hope to participate in the March of the Living. 
We will stand with 10,000 people from over 50 different countries and make a pledge to never forget. Please join me as we take a moment of silence for our family members who are not present, for those who perished during the Shoah, and for those who survived but whom we have lost. Thank you. May their memory be a blessing. Hi, my name is Dana Bakdakoto. My dad is a Holocaust survivor. I'd like to read the Second Generation Pledge. We are the first generation born after the darkness. Through our parents' memories, words, and silence, we are linked to the annihilated Jewish existence whose echoes permeate our consciousness. We dedicate this pledge to you, our parents, who suffered and survived. To our grandparents, who perished in the flames. To our vanished brothers and sisters, more than one million Jewish children so brutally murdered. To all six million whose unyielding spiritual and physical resistance, even in the camps and the ghettos, exemplifies our people's commitment to life. We pledge to remember. We pledge to remember. We shall teach our children to preserve forever that uprooted Jewish spirit, which could not be destroyed. We shall tell the world of the depths to which humanity can sink and the heights which were attained even in hell itself. We shall fight anti-Semitism and all forms of racial hatred by our dedication to freedom throughout the world. We affirm our commitment to the state of Israel and to the furtherance of Jewish life in our homeland. We pledge ourselves to the oneness of the Jewish people. We are your children. Vir zin du. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon once again. I come to you with a pitch, with a request, with an ask. A couple years ago, my colleagues and I, along with the help of, and I hate to name names because when you start naming names, you leave people off, but with the help of Michael Bloom and Ruth Weiner and so many others, we were able to pass Holocaust Education Bill. But it's come to a, come to a time where as, as so many educators are teaching Holocaust education, we need to get something behind it. We need to get some oomph behind it, some money behind it to fund professional development, to fund um, resources for our teachers to really push and to really get across the education that our kids so need, so much need to deserve and need to learn. So this is my plea. My ask is that you do this. Please email or call the following legislatures, le legislators and ask them to support a bill that I introduced this year. It's House Bill 6203. House Bill 6203. The House bill reads as such. It's an act concerning the Holocaust and genocide education and awareness curriculum. Again, we passed it, my colleagues and I, um, a couple years ago, but we need to do more. And what it will do is it will provide the State Education Resource Center with funding or training, equipment and professional development for purposes of implementing the Holocaust and genocide education awareness program. The education committee members that you should contact, and if you don't have a pencil or if you don't have uh, the ability to write it down, you can go on the Connecticut General Assembly website. It's on the table? Okay. Thank you so much. And you can contact the following legislators, Senator Douglas McCroy, Senator Jeff Curry, who are the chairs of the education committee on the Democratic side, and the ranking members on the Republican side are Kathleen McCarty and Eric Bethel. Berthel. So please, um, I ask that you support this bill. Thank you. All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Rosberg. I'm a senior at Connor High School, and we are the Mayor's Youth Council. We are part of a team of 18 students in grades 9 through 12 who represent different public and private schools 
in West Hartford. Our purpose is to help plan and facilitate community projects to improve the quality of life for West Hartford youth, such as the Butterfly Project. Similar to the Butterfly Project, local organizations have been instrumental in the involvement of all NYC members. Through the council, uh, even though it's only our second year, the progress we have made is astronomical, as you will later hear. Good afternoon. My name is Alani Roach, and I am a junior at Conard. When I first heard about the Mary's Youth Council, it was like a door opened up in front of me. I saw an opportunity to make a difference in my community, and so I took it. The NYC gives its members the ability to learn more about our own, advocate for our teens, and gain incredible experiences from working with town organizations on various initiatives. Within the first year of the council, we got involved with the Dinah Road Street Renaming Project, the Witness Stones Project, the Mental Health Podcast with the Bridge Family Center, and hosted a Celebrate Diversity concert with high school bands. For this year, we are working on the Slavery Walking Tour with the Witness Stones Project and Noah Webster House, the Kindness Project with West Hartford Libraries, West Hartford P F Food Pantry, and the Fern Street Backpack Program, the West Hartford Immigrant Teens with Golden Door Hartford, the Environmental Video Contest with Tr Heat Smart West Hartford, and of course, the Butterfly Project with Voices of Hope. Hello everyone. The Butterfly Project is an incredible project that calls action through education. In each of the four main high schools, KO, Hall, Conard, and Nija, there was an event where each student participant painted a butterfly. These butterflies represent the 1.5 million children who were killed in the Holocaust. To really accent this, each butterfly was paired with a biography card that told a different child's story. As you can imagine, this created a significant impact on everyone as it really helped each student connect on a deeper level. And as you walk out, there's a sample of the butterflies so you guys can see. The Butterfly Project also plays tribute to the poem, The Butterfly, which was written by a young prisoner, Pavel Friedman. This poem overall has a theme explaining that butterflies are beautiful, resilient, and represent transformation and freedom. To really emphasize this point, once all of the butterflies are dried and ready to fly, they're going to be permanently displayed in one of the West Hartford libraries. This will not only unite our community, but it will also act as a reminder for courage, justice, remembrance, and hope, empowering our community to take action and making the world a much more peaceful and powerful place for all. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jack Gold. I'm a current senior at Kingswood Oxford. Um, and the Butterfly Project is important to me because I have a direct connection to the goals of the project. My great grandmother escaped from Dusseldorf when she was 12 years old. Half the family went to Sao Paulo, half the family came to New Haven, and the few that, of my family that stayed were killed, some children. I was fortunate enough to have known my gram until she died when I was 14. I was able to hear her first-hand accounts of her journey, and I look forward to sharing the story with my children one day. This project helped me not only honor her legacy, but the same legacy of those in my family who are in South America, the few that stayed in Dusseldorf, and the rest of the 1.5 million children who were killed during the Holocaust. Listen. Shh. Listen to the stillness. This is the stillness of the voices that were taken away from us. People who lived here and here and there and two streets away, Motri Birtik. Voices that were taken from us. We are the voices that are left. We must be their voice carrying their song. And so we will do.
the hymn of the survivors of those who fought and those who survived never say that you have walked the final way though leaden skies obscure the light of day the hour we longed for will certainly appear and our steps will proclaim we are still here Zognit kemol as du gehst dem letzten Weg Hoch ihm lem bleide verstellt neue Tag Kommen wird noch unser euch gedenkte schon Es wird abbeugt von unser Tropfen seinen Do Kommen wird noch unser euch gedenkte schon Svetak pojkto nuzar trot mir seinen dol. Von grünen Palmen lang bis weiß und lang von Schnee. Wir kommen euch mit unser Heim, mit unser Weh. Und jeder Spritz, was ist gefall, unser Blut. Sprotzen wird dort unser Gure, unser Mut. Von jedem Spritz, was ist gefall, von unser Blut. Rotze wird dort unser Gure, unser Mut. Das Lied geschrieben ist, nicht Blut und nicht mit Blei. Es ist nicht kein Liedl von der Feuge, euer der Frei. Das hat Erfolg zwischen Fallen nicht gewendet. Das Lied gesungen mit Naganes in die Hände. Das hat Erfolg zwischen Fallen nicht gewendet. Das Lied gesungen mit Naganes in die Hände. Da sag nicht Kemul, als du gehst dem letzten Weg. Hat Schimmlen bleierne, verstellen neue Tag. Kommen wird noch unser Reus gebänkte Schock. Zweck abbeugt an unser Trott mir seinen Dorf. Kommen wird noch unser Reus gebänkte Schock. Sveta Poljton unser trom, mir seinen do! Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here at this year's International Holocaust Remembrance Day program. It's very nice to be back in person and see so many familiar faces. I'm Peter Fishman. I'm a founding member of Voices of Hope, and I'm the current president. We are so glad to see you again for this important occasion and thank you for attendance and support as we continue to remember together. Before we conclude today's program, please join us in wishing two of our Holocaust survivors a happy birthday today. Today is Sylvia Brill's 81st birthday and Trudy Lovell's recently celebrated her 103rd birthday. And now I'm going to go off script. Joel, your remarks inspired me, but for several reasons, not just the content, but also the fact that my family survived from Holland, and my family was hidden in Holland. So we have a lot in common. We'll talk more on our trip to Poland, so I'm looking forward to that. It's, it's amazing the connections we make and the things we find out about each other that we don't always know. Thank you both for being such wonderful, a, a wonderful presence in our community. We wish you a happy birthday, surrounded by friends and family. I shouldn't go off script because I'm messing everything up. Today's program would not have been possible without the help of the event committee. So there's our event committee and the incredible professional staff, Kathy Fishman, Robin Landau, and Kimberly Berlera, who some of you may know, but also know that she's in Germany, not with us, and everything she does for us, she does remotely. Thank you. We would also like to extend our thanks to our friends at JFACT. Michael Bloom, thank you for standing with us in this important event. The Jewish Federation of Greater Hartford, the Jewish Community Foundation of Greater Hartford, the mayor and the legislators who joined us today, and the Mayor's Youth Council students in Kerry Carp from the West Hartford Public Library. Thank you. While today, <laughs> while, today, 
While today is about remembering the past, it is also about working together to create a more hopeful future. All of you help us do this work. We can't do it alone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for those of you who speak. And thank you for just supporting Voices of Hope in all the ways that you do. Speaking of the future, Voices of Hope is thrilled to be part of two community programs, Endow Hartford 21 and Life and Legacy, that will secure our collective promise to never forget by ensuring Voices of Hope's existence long into the future. Thank you for those of you who have already taken part in these programs. For more information, please contact Robin Landau, Director of Programs, sitting right here in front. We encourage you to attend our programs over the course of the year and support our mission to promote a culture of courage to stand up against hatred through Holocaust and genocide education and remembrance. Please remember to call the Education Committee members listed on your tables to ensure the bill to, is passed to provide State Educational Resources Center with funding for training, equipment, and professional development for the purposes of implementing the Holocaust and Genocide Education and Awareness Program. I can't emphasize enough that everybody here and as many people as you can encourage to contact the people on the Education Committee and let them know that this is important to you will make a difference. We need your voices to be raised up to support Voices of Hope and to support funding. We've been, we've been carrying the torch in Voices of Hope, trying to get Holocaust and edu uh, genocide education done, and it's, it's great. We, we made the promise to get this bill passed that we would do it budget neutral, but we need a little budget positive now. So thank you, Bobby Gibson, for moving this forward. We're looking forward to seeing this bill get passed. Please visit our website at www.ct, remember the CT, voicesofhope.org for a listing of our upcoming events and to learn more about how Voices of Hope and our Hero Center supports Holocaust and genocide education across the state. We thank you to our supporter for your support today, and we thank you for your promise to remember today, tomorrow, and for future generations. Thank you. <laughs>